Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. The Element 14 community loaned me this instrument. It is a 3000 series Analog Discovery Pro from Digilent. It is the successor to one of my favorite tools, the Analog Discovery 2. In this episode, I give you a hands-on overview and show you some measurements you can do with it. Let's go measure. There are two pieces to the Analog Discovery Pro, the hardware and the software. Currently, Digilent offers two versions with the only difference being two or four oscilloscope channels. Along with those, there are two waveform generators and a 16-channel digital interface. On the back, the ports are power, trigger in-out, USB device, and four USB host ports. More on those four later. By default, oscilloscope probes are not included with the Analog Discovery Pro, but Digilent does offer bundles that include them. They are standard 5mm probes with a selectable 1x or 10x attenuation. If you have other probes or cables with BNC connectors, they should work fine with the Analog Discovery Pro, provided they are intended for a 1 mega ohm input. I didn't realize most people don't know this, but most scope probes have a cap that can pull off and then snaps back on. And a flying lead set specific to the Analog Discovery Pro is included as well. The software is called Waveforms. Each of the instruments is a panel and you can use multiple instruments at once. The user interface is very configurable and one of my favorite aspects of the system. However, some hardware limits means you cannot use all instruments at the same time. For example, you cannot run the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer simultaneously, and that's because they both need the analog channels. When you try to run one, the other one stops automatically. But don't think of this as a limitation. In that example, you could run an FFT on the scope instrument to get both views. And in other cases, it doesn't always make sense to run the scope with the other instruments. So it's not that big of a deal. Waveforms is a free download and includes demo instruments. So you can check out how the environment works before investing in the hardware. Digilens discovery tools are extremely versatile and they make lots of measurements. I can't cover them all in one video. So I'll try to hit some highlights of the Analog Discovery Pro. Keep in mind, if you have additional questions, asking on the Element 14 community is a great way to get an answer. Either I or another knowledgeable member can help. For now, let's go with the oscilloscope. From my past experiences, most people ask me about the oscilloscope instrument. Long story short, I like it and it works well. The analog input BNCs take up most of the space of the front panel. The key specifications are that it is a 14-bit ADC running up to 125 mega samples per second. Digilent specifications say its analog bandwidth is 55 megahertz. Analog triggering includes edge, pulse width, and window. Trigger circuits usually have a hysteresis setting to help stabilize edge detection on noisy or slow signals. One feature I really liked is how easy it was to adjust the hysteresis by just dragging the range indicator. And that's probably one of those things that I'm the only one that will ever notice, but I really do like it. Because of the integration, the oscilloscope can also be triggered from other instruments. For example, in this setup, I have several digital channels being sampled along with the analog waveform. The trigger is actually a digital signal, but everything stays correlated in time. There are many features available you would find on other more expensive oscilloscopes. For example, there is an FFT with spectrogram, display persistence, data logging, multiple cursors, and a good assortment of automated measurements. The mouse scroll wheel is context sensitive. You can scroll things like voltage or time in their dropdowns or by hovering in the access on the waveform area. Even though I prefer physical knobs, I found using the mouse wheel very intuitive with these scope functions, especially since you'll probably be using a mouse for the other stuff anyway. Before talking about the other instruments, there are three things on the scope that I wanna talk about first. Okay, I dislike how the inputs only have labels on the bottom. Once probes are connected, you cannot easily tell which port is which. So I definitely recommend changing the color bands on the probes or adding stickers with numbers on the top of the box. Second, let's talk about that bandwidth spec. In the episode on bandwidth, I showed how you can use a rise time measurement to estimate the analog bandwidth of an oscilloscope. Using an Arduino Uno, I know that its rise time is around three nanoseconds. The Analog Discovery Pro measures 17 nanoseconds by default. Using the 0.35 over rise time method, I get 20 megahertz, which means the negative 3 dB bandwidth is probably around 25, maybe even 30 megahertz. And uh, that's less than 55. For some reason, the instrument defaults to 100 mega samples per second instead of the maximum 125. 
you have to go into a setting in the device manager to change the speed. And then just by doing that, now the rise time drops to about 14 nanoseconds. Still not quite the rate at spec yet, but there's still one more trick we can employ. Did you notice on the front panel that it says something about oversampling? Other oscilloscopes call this mode equivalent time. By using an oversample factor of four at 125 megasamples per second, the Analog Discovery Pro combines multiple acquisitions to effectively increase its sample rate to 500 megasamples per second. And now we see the rise time measures about 8.5 nanoseconds, putting us into the 45 to 50 megahertz range. So what does this mean? Well, I would say the Analog Discovery Pro has a general purpose or real-time bandwidth of roughly 30 megahertz. In cases where you are measuring a repetitive signal, you can get up to the 55. But for general purpose debug, that bandwidth is fine. Combined with all the other scope features, it still makes for a top-notch four-channel scope. Next to the BNCs, there are two channels for the arbitrary waveform generator. The built-in functions can produce a sine wave up to 25 megahertz. And there is a variety of other standard wave shapes with plenty of controls to modify them. In fact, as an arbitrary generator, you can even play audio files directly from the software. Now, I actually thought this unit was broken and I almost sent it back because of one setting. One time, I went to turn on the generator, but there was no output on the scope. I even checked with a different scope. Eventually, I found this setting in the options that globally disables the waveform generator output. I just wish the software had said something when I hit run on the waveform generator instrument window. You can connect the waveform generator and the scope channel together and run them at the same time, just like you would with another generator so that you can see what its output looks like before putting it into your circuit. However, unlike other generators, this isn't really necessary because the preview graphic is super helpful. As I have said in the past, waveform generators are a great tool to have, but I rarely use one, except when they're integrated into other measurements like they are with the Analog Discovery Pro. Three instruments on the Analog Discovery Pro make use of the combined analog input and outputs. One is the network analyzer, which measures transfer functions and can generate Bode or Nyquist plots, among other things. Another is the impedance analyzer, which characterizes circuit elements and breaks down their individual components. And the curve tracer characterizes semiconductor devices like diodes or transistors. On the predecessor, the Analog Discovery 2, there are adapters which helps makes these measurements easier. And as someone who bought those adapters myself, I'm a little bit disappointed that they don't work with the Analog Discovery Pro, but there's not really anywhere to plug them in. However, the good news is that the software shows exactly how to connect a device under test. The bad news is you have to make all of those connections yourself and uh, make sure you don't swap scope probes while recording video footage. One caveat to know about is that the maximum voltage appears to be on the order of plus or minus five volts. So like in my test case, I couldn't really characterize any of my Zener diodes since their reverse breakdowns were all higher than five volts. Those three capabilities are a fantastic use of the integrated nature of a tool like this one. And just as a reminder, you can download the waveform software right now and see how the measurements work for yourself because there are demo modes for each of the virtual instruments. Waveforms is an awesome software tool and Hands down, my favorite aspect of the Digilent family of tools. In my opinion, it is the best software-based TNM tool on the market. Using individual instruments is as easy as clicking on one to load, but the real power comes in configuring the workspace based on what you're doing. As an example, here's a workspace for a project where I'm using the logic analyzer and pattern generator to test some RP2040 code. Not only that, but I am using the built-in power supply to power the board. When you save workspaces, you can include the captured data. That way you or anyone else can reload the project. Because of the fact that you do not need additional options or software licenses, it is very easy to share your workspace with other people. I mentioned that because for some instruments, you have to buy an additional license to work offline. And I'm very happy to see that that is not the case with something like the Analog Discovery Pro. Last, I need to mention that Waveforms is very extensible. Many instruments support CSV import and export of data. On the oscilloscope, you can define custom measurements, and in logic and protocols, you can write custom decoders. As an example, I made a super basic one to decode ROM accesses for an Apple II. It's just a little bit of JavaScript and a lot of lookups. 
I really like that example, but frankly, that was on a digital discovery because I need it more than 16 logic channels. However, the analog discovery pro has very similar capability. And in fact, it takes that extensibility to the next level. Remember at the beginning, I said that there are four USB ports on the back? Well, let's talk about why that is. Inside of waveforms in the device manager, there is a boot dialog for the Analog Discovery Pro. One of the options is Linux mode, which causes the AD Pro to reboot and a Linux terminal to appear via USB as a virtual serial port. So inside of the device is a single board computer running Linux. You can add USB devices like a thumb drive and a Wi-Fi adapter to make for a full featured Linux terminal. The example Digilent provides is to load some Python scripts and do automated testing with an analog to digital converter module. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those PMODs and I didn't have enough time to dive into the Python API yet to try to write something myself. However, it appears it is possible to automate a variety of tests that can run self-contained on the Analog Discovery Pro with no PC connected. And just to note, the virtual COM port is not the only interface into the box. You can connect with a USB-based Wi-Fi adapter or using the built-in Ethernet to SSH into it, just like any other Linux client. The Analog Discovery Pro is an oscilloscope, a logic analyzer, a waveform generator, a network analyzer, a protocol decoder, a power supply, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The Analog Discovery Pro starts at $895 US for the two-channel version and about $1,235 US for the four-channel version. Both of those prices are before adding probes. Follow the links below to the Element 14 community for more information on these products, including pricing in your region. While you're there, you'll find more resources related to these tools, including a link to the road test program, which is where this unit is headed next. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to discovering analog measurements like a pro on my electronics workbench.